Well, joining me is uh, Rob Collister, who's got responsibility for the TT. Uh, this is the DED decision to stop a local brewery uh, using the words TT in any shape, form or fashion, I presume, down at their tent and obviously trading with their beer and their T-shirts. Is that something right for Bushies? Well, what we're looking at, Paul, is just to enforce our own um, property rights on this um, item. And I do sympathise with Bushies, and I've had um, two phone calls with Martin, and we'll work with Martin and Bushies when he returns to the Isle of Man. Was it a bit heavy-handed to send a letter out uh, threatening, uh, at the end of it, let me just get this wording right, at the very end, you, you say, the department will luckily have to refer this matter to external lawyers to pursue... Uh, the actions and so on. I mean, you know, it well, sounds it's, quite. You've, you've missed a word out there, Paul. We've actually said regrettably, and that's the key of this. We have um, 14 um, commercial partners that pay considerable amount of money into this event, over a million pounds, and we've got to protect their rights. Now, that million pounds goes into the sport, and that's the crucial message here. Those um, partners, those um, people who come forward and invest in the event, we have a duty to protect their rights. And that's what we're trying to do. But that doesn't say that we shouldn't acknowledge the contribution paid by many other businesses on the island uh, related or associated with the TT. Has Bushies turned down that option in the past or have they ever been offered the option to be a partner? I think Bushies have been approached in years gone by and there's an option that they could come forward in the future. But that's for another day. That's a discussion we've got to have. At this present moment in time, all we're saying is, is that um, we believe that they've um, infringed our um, property rights and we'd like to discuss that with them in order to assure that our commercial partners are treated fairly and professionally as they should be because they have put their own money and that money goes back into the sport and that's absolute key and that's over a million pounds that's collected and put into the event and that's really important to get that message across. What exactly do you own as far as TT is concerned? I mean obviously Audi have a car, you don't have a problem with that? No, Audi was registered before ours was so registered. Do they not own it then? <laughs> no, Audi, that's relating to cars and it was an Audi TT. Yeah. They're not involved in, in motorcycling, they're not in, involved in producing okay. t-shirts. So what do you own then? You've, you've, you've gone for everything but... We own the letters TT and that was registered and that's key. And that yeah. enables us to, to go out into the commercial um, marketplace and ask our, our, our partners and say, would you like to license that for us and produce merchandise? And the key thing here is when it conflicts against one of our commercial partners, and that's what's happening here, we have somebody that produces merchandise formally and officially on behalf of the department, on behalf of the event, and they pay a considerable amount. And that, that figure is over six figures. So they have got, we've got to protect them. And all we're saying is that we'd like to speak to Martin, we'd like to speak to Bushies to clarify the position in order to protect that commercial stakeholder because they have put their money in the event. So is it the way you've handled this? Is You've been a bit heavy handed, do you accept that? No, I don't. I think the letter which you, you have in front yeah. of you there, the letter was a sympathetic letter to say that we believe there's been a breach of our, inter of our um, property rights and we'd like to discuss them. Mm. But the option, the final option is, is that if we can't find a solution, then yeah, there is an option that we may have to go down the legal right. route. But I'm, I'm absolutely adamant as an MHK, as a Manx resident, I understand that the significant part the Bushies has played over many, many years. Well, that's years. what I was going to say. I mean, so, this is a guy who's put his heart and soul into that business. It's, it's part of the TT DNA. When it? I spoke to Martin this morning and I spoke to him last night, he is really, really wants to come forward and he really wants to work with the department to find a solution. And I am absolutely support that. But what we cut, the message we've got to remember is that people are paying over a million pounds to produce merchandise, to do certain things, which is ploughed back into the sport. What we can't have is somebody turning up, I'm not saying this is bushes, oh. but somebody turning up in Douglas just before TT selling merchandise, which is oh. not formally, yeah, it's yeah. not been recognised. What we're trying to do as a department is raise the bar for the event. Okay, okay. So when people buying merchandise, it's of good quality. And, and that, again, is what we're trying to get across. Which bits of this is in problems then? I mean, is it just it's, because it says TT, or is it the way the, the TT is referred to as bikes? I mean, is there it, a, a way around this? It's it's bushies TT. have a trademark. This is something a, a discussion is going to have to, to be held in the future. Bushies owns the, the, the property rights to Bushies TT. Right. However, we own the rights to TT. 
And that's a discussion that's going to happen. And, and I'm happy to go on the record to say, yes, somebody has, didn't monitor this on behalf of the department. And that's where the, the, the problem is. Because if we'd actually been aware of this happening in 2014, we would have objected. Yeah. And we would have highlighted the fact that we'd already had TT registered by the department. So things like on the promenade, there was a TT cafe, wasn't there? And that's changed names, I think. You, you going after everyone? Or was it, are, you, are you particularly got your lawyers tuned in the, into that sort of market that might, people might turn up on the week, start flogging T-shirts? Uh, that sort of thing with no sort of money Let's going back. Let's be very clear. We're not going after everyone. So we're not going to go after the, the poor tea room in Bride, which people have been mentioned. What we're actually saying is we have 13, 14 or 15 commercial partners that have invested over a million pounds in the event. If somebody produces a product that conflicts with that um, license or um, conditions that have been put in place, then we will defend their, their right yeah, to produce it. And have those people complained to you then? Have no, you, have no you... they haven't. But as a department, yeah. we have a duty to highlight this, that we believe we already have a commercial partner that is producing merchandise, which is of a very good quality, good price. We know Bushies have produced T-shirts. So the T-shirt you don't like then, is it? No, because it's, it's the TT it's bit. Still that, okay. it's, there's nothing, That's on bottles or there's, anything? There's nothing. No. Well, we're going to have to have a very detailed discussion with Martin. and Because um, what we're doing is taking the event from where it's been in the past to a really professional commercial event that generates income that goes back into the sport. Right. And that's where what we've done is there's plenty of people over the years that have, uh, that have generated or have made a lot of money from the TT but never invested okay. in the event. So what we need to do is to speak to Martin, speak to other stakeholders that, that actually provide a vital part to the TT but make sure that we're actually working in partnership with them and if a license needs to be issued then make sure that license is issued. Tramtastic? Is that a problem? Anything, any, T &T there? anything with TT. We've got the rights on TT. <laughs> wow. But this is this is something for um, a, a discussion for a later date, and we'll have that discussion with Martin and his um, representatives. What we're trying to do is is to try to make sure that the department generates as much income as it can, okay. which can be ploughed into the event, but also work with all the local traders and partners to make sure that we're actually protecting our commercial um, partners but work with the local providers that play a vital part in this whole fantastic two weeks. And what we're trying to do is raise the bar. DED, yet again, in a sort of spotlight, not very favourably. I, mean, I, mean, I know you're fairly new to this whole thing, but has this got anything to do with the new way it's been handled? Or is this going back to that this policy was the, the last CEO and that the last way it's been leaded? Or is this Lawrence Skelly? I mean, who takes the rap for this? No, let's look at the, the actual crux of this. It came to highlight that there may have been an infringement of our property rights. Yeah. And it is right, as the department who's trying to generate income, to actually say we think there's a, there's a problem there. This was sent 22nd December. And we sent a letter. And 22nd letter, of December. Yeah, and the letter sent to Martin was just, it's a fairly straightforward letter. It's not aggressive, it's a fairly straightforward letter. And it's saying that we'd like to, to discuss that there may be an infringement. No, it's fairly aggressive when you have to, no, with that lawyer I, thing. I mean, I, I would think that's... No, it, it does, again... I know, you're saying, down, I know you're saying reluctantly. It does say reluctantly, but we're trying to take the TT races and the motorcycling, the festival of motorcycling, to a new level. Could this not be done on the phone call to Martin? Well, if, this, if, if the government, if this was my own business, it would have already been in the hands of the lawyer because it's, it's, it's in my interest as a commercial um, um, partner of that. Mm -hmm. Because it's a government department, we have to treat things a little bit um, more closely, should we say. And we're trying to be fair to the likes of Martin and to Bushes. And this isn't, this isn't anything. We're not going after one particular business. If somebody else produces something which is, conflicts against one of our commercial partners, then again, we'll be writing the same letter and saying that we need... And what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to bring the businesses on the Isle of Man that have, have, that have made a lot of profit okay, over the I'm years... Thinking, yeah. We're trying to say, we're trying to bring this into a commercial reality. What other successes have you had? And I say successes. What other uh, lawyers have you had to engage with trademark disputes on the TTO well, for the, let's, the time? Let's be very clear. We've not engaged anybody. This is a department that has sent a letter. This is no, We've not engaged lawyers. We're not intending to engage lawyers. What we're saying is we'd like to speak to Martin. We'd like to speak to Bushes. In reality, I have to say, as a new MHK, I wish I'd phoned Martin yeah. in December and said, I have this concern. I've gone through the, the, the trade, you know, the registered trademarks. I think there's there's room there for discussion because Martin has got a registered trademark, and we have to acknowledge that, and we're going to work with them on that, because 
somebody should have picked that up in 2014. The objection should have gone in because what we're trying to do is, is to centralise everything, that everything is controlled in order to ensure the Isle of Man benefits. That's the key message. Martin has nothing but good things for the Isle of Man and I, he has been a stalwart over the years. His, his name or Bush's name is, is synonymous with the Isle of Man. Well, we hope to get hold of Martin. I know he's in uh, off Ireland, but we can hopefully do a link yeah. with him. And before you go, I just have to ask you, you're probably not going to be able to tell me anything. Vision 9, anything you want to say? Nothing to, to add on Vision 9. No. I, I think we're trying to make the right decision. That's what this is all about. How, however difficult you know, decisions are, we have to make the right decisions. In this case, it is the right decision. I wish I'd phoned him in December. That's my mistake. This is not the minister's fault. That's mine. I made the decision that we felt there was a, an infringement of our own integral, of our property rights. I have to stand by that. So it's not the minister who's to blame here. It's me. And um, I apologise to Martin how we've handled it slightly. I felt the letter was right. But I will amend that by having a meeting with Martin when he comes back. And hopefully by that, we'll be able to go forward in whatever design we decide. Either he uses the TT and he pays for that under a licence, or he removes the TT um, logo. But it's only when he conflicts with one of our commercial partners. That's the key message. We're not going to go after every single cafe. It's all about our commercial partners who pay that over a million pounds into the event, which goes back into the sport. It doesn't go into the treasury coffers. It goes back into the sport. And what we're trying to do is generate more income in the future. And that's the, the key message here. We want everybody on board. We want a fantastic event. But to do that, we're going to have to re um, raise revenue. And we have to look at every avenue for that. Thank you.